subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV. Hello, Neds. Welcome once again to Gina High School Hour on Joy Learning TV. I am your facilitator, Isaac Ohinamankwa, for ICT. Well, in, form, in Basic 7, we call it what? Computing. We are the new generation, right? Okay, I want to ask you a question. Have you ever had the opportunity to talk to a group or even to stand before people to speak? If yes, how did you do it? Was it by word of mouth or... In a presentation form, well, no matter how you did it, you presented whatever you had, if it be ideas or um, answers to or solutions to a particular issue, it was still a presentation. Today, we are going to talk about introduction to presentation softwares. Introduction to presentation software. And before we go on, I need you to take your books, your phones, your laptops, whatever gadget you have that can help you or aid you in the lesson. You should get prepared so that we start. Then the quote of the day, the quote of the day, also by Albert Einstein, one of the greatest scientists who has ever, ever lived. One of the greatest scientists. He says, imagination is more important than knowledge. Imagination is more important than knowledge. Don't get him wrong. Just wait for him to finish before you jump on him. He says, for knowledge is limited. Knowledge is limited. Whereas imagination embraces the entire world. Stimulating progress, giving birth to evolution. Well, I tend to agree with him. Imagine whatever you learned from the basic one or even from the kindergarten crash to whichever class you are in right now, you realize that the knowledge you have acquired is still limited. You are nowhere near what someone who has probably um, gone to do their doctorate degree or a researcher or um, an inventor has been able to acquire. You are limited to the scope of your study. That is your knowledge. You are limited to the scope of your study. <clears throat> but your imagination is not limited to what? The scope of your study. But you can imagine so many things. The greatest scientists, the greatest inventors, the greatest, greatest tech, uh, technological giants were, had one thing in common. They imagined the future. The future is yours to imagine. So Albert Einstein says what? Imagination is more important than what? Knowledge, because knowledge is limited by imagination, will lead to what progress, giving birth to what evolution. That is our quote for the day. Okay, so by the end of this lesson, the learners will be able to explain presentation tools or explain the presentation software, what a presentation software is. And also... List five examples of presentation softwares and identify the benefits of using a presentation software. Now, we will get to the part where we create our own presentation, but for today's lesson, we are going to base our lesson on the introduction. Then later, we can go into how to prepare a presentation. So we are going to look at the definition first, then we come to what? Uh, history. So definition first, then we come to history, then we come to what? The examples. <laughs> definition. So what is a presentation to? When the name presentation is mentioned, what comes to mind? To present something. What comes to mind? So we are looking at presentation software in reference to what presentation, to present something. So if you wrote that presentation is more or less presenting or bringing out your ideas out on maybe a paper or whatever, 
in a systemic manner, then you are right. Because if you want to present something to an audience or to people, it must be in a systemic manner. It must follow. So <laughs> we say presentation software is a category of application software. So in the first place, we should have it in mind that presentation software falls under what application software. That is specifically designed to allow users to create a presentation of ideas. Remember what I said, imagination. In presentations, you also bring out imaginations, and these imaginations will help build a good presentation. So it says what presentation of ideas by stringing together or by putting together text, images, and audio or videos, or what we call the audio visual. Audio visual. So what? Putting together what? Text, images, audio, uh, visual. So the presentation tells a story or supports speech or the presentation of information. Like I'm doing now, I am presenting you with what? An information. And whatever I am presenting you with is being what? Telecasted to you. So that is more or less a simple definition for what? Presentation. The presentation software falls under the productivity software of application software. Remember, we have, when we come to uh, the types of softwares, you know, in a computer or in computing, we have two ways, or let me say three ways. One is the hardware, the software, and the lifeware, the lifeware being the human, which is normally not spoken about. Because nowadays we have computers who can operate by themselves what we call the AIs, the artificial intelligence. They can operate by themselves. So when we group them into two, which is the hardware, the software, under the software, we can have what we call the uh, system software and we have the word, the application software. Where the system software falls, and uh, we have the OS, that's the operating systems. And we come to application software, we can group them into what? Productivity software and general purpose softwares. So these are all types of softwares. So presentation software falls under what? The productivity because it is solving a particular problem. Or it's, a, it's solving a particular problem. Okay. So presentation software can be divided into two also, which is the business presentation software and the general multimedia authoring software. Someone will say, hey, why are we going with this? Yes. You should know that anytime you are trying to do a presentation, the type of software you are using will determine your outlook or your output. So if you choose to use uh, a, a business presentation software, I'm sure you'll be limited to certain features, which is connected to those in the business world. But if you use uh, software tools like... Uh, PowerPoint, of which we'll talk about, then you know we are talking about the general purpose software because we have other presentation softwares like Power BI and all those things. They are all uh, presentation softwares in their own class. But most presentation softwares, applications already provide tools that allow users to create both professional look business presentations and general multimedia presentations. So as I said, we have some softwares which are purposely for what business, and they have others for general purpose. <laughs> so if you are lucky to have one which is for general purpose, then you can do both what the business presentation over there and also the general multimedia presentation, of which uh, PowerPoint is one of such tools. We will be looking at other uh, presentation softwares. But let's go on. Let's look at... Presentation software is also known as a presentation program. Presentation software is also known as what? A presentation program. Now let's look at a brief history about presentation software. I have watched movies where, um, let's say, the military wants to present an information to their people. And you realize that they used a film the magnetic tape type of 
presentation tools. Where it's like a, a projector is projected on the wall where this film is moved from one page to another, just to have a view of what the uh, presenter is presenting to them. But along the line, we had tools like PowerPoint, which came in to change the status quo. So let's look at where it all began. You go for some programs or some seminars or some, even in schools where teachers and, 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 and facilitators use a lot of paper or uh, whiteboards instead of what projectors which will enhance education. I know some of you will be saying, hey, our school, our school, our school. Yeah, most schools will not have the projectors where we would like to project, but uh, I'm telling you the truth. If projectors are introduced into classroom teaching and classroom learning, it will be very fun. It will be fun because I've tried it, I have loved it, the kids have loved it. So I'm saying that what? In, in some schools or in some places where you go and presentation is being done, you realize that it's on a paper or uh, the information is written on a board, which sometimes when the presenter has not got a clear handwriting or a good handwriting, will cause the people he's presenting, his audience, to have um, a bad time. Now, the first presentation software goes back into the 1982. 1982. It was called the Exclusion. The, um, the VCN Exclusion. VCN Exclusion. It ran on only the IBM PCs. It ran on only the IBM PCs. It required libraries of images and icons. Before you can use them, you have to get clip arts of images and icons, a lot of them, before you will be able to use them. It was mainly text. It was mainly text, clip arts, and geometric shapes. And geometric what? Shapes. As well as pi bar and line graphs. So this was the first presentation software that was created. That's the VCN Excavation. Then it was created by Visual Communication Network Incorporation. That stands for the VCN. VCN, that's Visual Communication Network Incorporation. It was published by Prentice Hall for the IBM PC in 1984. Remember, it was created in 1982, but published in what, 1984. Presentation software is generally used for creating slideshows that display information. So there we are done with the history a little bit. We'll come back to history again. But let's go into this one before we come back to the history. And this time, the history we are going back to will be for what? PowerPoint. So it says what? Well, presentation software is generally used for what? Creating slide shows that display information. The software has three main components. That is text editor for inputting and formatting text. That means you can enter text and delete text and edit text, change it and move it around like what are, in, the, in the way you want it. Then we have what? Facility for inserting graphics and other multimedia files. That means it, has, it gives you the ability to insert what? Music, video pictures, and all those things. All multimedia files. Then we have what? Slideshow system for displaying the content. So a slideshow system for displaying the content. Before the advent of presentation softwares, presenters commonly used an easel to hold posters uh, that co contained illustrations to support the report or a slide projector to display graphics printed on a transparent plastic film. As I was saying, when you watch movies which, let's say, date back, uh, or the movies are about the 80s, the 70s, they normally use the plastic films or the magnetic films. They use those ones. 
But if they wanted to support whatever they were doing, they used what? The posters, which had the illustrations. But in current years, we have all this embedded in one. So this method were inflexible. For example, changing small things in the printed material, which means it has already been printed. Used printed materials used could result in mismatch graphics or illustrations, sometimes requiring redoing the entire thing. With presentation software, not only authoring, but also correcting illustration can be what done easily. As I was saying, all these have been placed in one for us as a presentation what software. So in the old days, if you want to change something, and let's say this slide we have here right now, I will have to redo everything and print it out. <clears throat> Examples of presentation software. The first one we can talk about is Visme. This is one example of a presentation software, Visme. Then we have Google Slide. Now, the Google Slide is mostly online um, presentation software, which can be saved in any, uh, any uh, format. So Google Slide. Then we have Apple's Keynote. Keynote, that's for Apple. Apple has a presentation software called Keynote. Then we have our favorite, my favorite, that's PowerPoint. PowerPoint is a very, very, very powerful tool. Very, very powerful tool, especially when you are using um, Office 360. Uh, Office 365, sorry. Office 365. It is a very, very powerful tool. Then we have Slide Bin. Slide Bin. Then we have Slide Bin. Now, PowerPoint. I want to go back to history again. Now we are going to look at PowerPoint, how it came in. And all those things. So PowerPoint came in somewhere around 1987, which was developed by Robert Gaskin and Dennis Austin for the American comp uh, computer com uh, software company, Forethought Incorporation. So the name of the company is called what? Forethought Incorporation. So to take ahead, Forethought, to take ahead. The program initially. The program was initially named Presenter. The program initially named Presenter was released for what? Apple. So it was formally called what? Presenter. And it was given to what? Apple. It was, the, or it was released for the Apple Macintosh in 1987. So we can see that the first... Um, Presentation software for, let's say, a computer, even though we had ones, which more or less forms the basis of what we have now, was what the presenter, which was what uh, released for what Apple Macintosh in 1987. You see a turn around here. In July of that same year, Microsoft Incorporation, or Microsoft Corporation, in its first significant software acquisition, the first software they bought, its significant, the most important software they bought, the first one was PowerPoint, which was sold to them for $14 million. That was somewhere in 1987. $14 million. That was a whole lot of money. A whole lot of money back then. So they bought the PowerPoint software for eight, uh, 40 million, sorry. So the presenter software was renamed to be PowerPoint. So you see what I was saying. Presenter, which was given to or launched or um, launched for Apple Macintosh, was later sold to what? Microsoft for $14 million. And the name was changed from presenter to what? PowerPoint. Now, when it was when it went through that process, it later the first PowerPoint was called PowerPoint 1.0, which produced an output 
of black and white. Its output was just black and white. There was no color. Just black and white text and lines, geometric lines, as I mentioned formerly, geometric lines overhead, transparent. They were all transparent. Then, another one came, which is a PowerPoint 2.0. Added output of what professional 35mm uh, color, color slides, including online transmission to overnight imaging and processing by Gini Graphics. So they changed uh, by PowerPoint 2.0, they added color touch to the PowerPoint. So it changed from PowerPoint 2.1 to this thing. So that is where it changed. And now we have what our PowerPoint, which has its foundation from what presenter, which was manufactured by Gaskin or designed by Gaskin and Austin. That's Dennis Austin in the year 1987. It was sold or it was, it was launched for Apple Macintosh. They later sold for $14 million to what Microsoft Corporation. Okay, so if this is what presentation is about, let's look at some of its benefits. Why do I even need a presentation software? I want you to write down some of the thoughts or some of the thoughts that comes to your mind when some you are asked why you need a presentation software. I'm giving you, um, let's say, two minutes to put something down. I just need a point from each one of you. I need you to brainstorm. Think about it. Why do we need a presentation software? Is it necessary at all? Why can't I just go and stand before the audience and speak and just go? Why? What, what changes? What, what, what? I can still do that. Okay. So the first one we can talk about, if you look at our diagram here, you realize that, or our image here, you realize that there's a, present, a presenter who is talking to the audience and using infographics, using graphics and other pies to, you know, or illustrations to what, speak to them. Now, it makes presentation delivery easy. It prevents the... Uh, it, or it, it, does, it does not put pressure on the brains of the audience where they will have to imagine, always imagining what the presenter is trying to describe. Here, whatever you are trying to describe is in pictures, is in videos for people to see. So you limit what the pressure on imagination or suspense when the uh, audience are in your presentation class. It can be used virtually everywhere or anywhere. Yes, it has no barriers. You don't even need internet to use, um, how do we call it, PowerPoint or a presentation software. But some power, uh, presentation softwares do need internet. They are online-based presentation softwares. And if you want the best of experience when it comes to presentation software, then you go online. Because you have a lot of features over there. Something like, uh, uh, I think, Creative Commons, that's where you are trying to copy a picture from online. You can just enter in your listed um, insert image and to give you a whole lot of images, which is from online. And immediately you pick them, automatically it gives you the, or the it's, it gives you the name of the owner of the picture, or the one who took it, the year. It gives you a whole lot of information, which prevents pirate, which is it, you from being uh, pirating other people's pictures and all those things. So it it's, can be used virtually anywhere. And I will say it again, the best experience to use presentation, you have to get it what, online. But those who don't have um, access to the internet, you can still use presentation offline and we still have the best of it. It is easy to use. It is what? Easy to use. Just open your slide, type in, you go to the next slide, type in, click on new slide, type in. If you want to add a picture, pick a picture, drop. 
take a picture, drop, or you can click on insert and go to what insert picture. It's quite easy. It's not difficult to use presentation. And when you are presenting to an audience, to you don't have to stress yourself. You just look on the board, or you it even prevents you from even looking more on the board. You can just speak to what you are speaking and the fact. Just a point, then you speak to the fact. A point, then you speak to the fact. Then you are good to go. So it makes presentation what easy to use. It allows the addition of multimedia. Yes, it allows the addition of what multimedia. We can have what videos. We can have pictures. We can have links, internet links. We can have telephone numbers, conversations, a whole lot of um, this. Uh, multimedia can be placed in the presentation, and it also provides an e effective way of communicating with audience. As I was saying, imagine you are presenting someone to, um, an information to someone, and the person has no knowledge or foundation in that particular field. And you are saying you are going deeper and deeper. Without pictures, nothing. How do you expect a person to understand or even think about what you are talking about? So the best thing sometimes is to use a presentation too. Where when you are speaking, the person might be able to see pictures. Imagine you are in a class and you are talking about um, the anatomy of a mosquito. Well, maybe we can't digest the mosquito to see what's inside. But let's say most people have not seen mosquito before. Not here in Ghana. Here, you see the mosquito. Yes. If you don't keep your environment neat, you see them. So if students are asked to bring mosquitoes to school, and in my home, I don't have a mosquito. How do I get a mosquito? Do I breed them? That would be dangerous too. So why don't we have a video of it a, in a slide form or in a slideshow form and project it to the students? We still have what? It's in a, what? a presentation form. Lessons going on will be in a presentation form where students will love your lesson. So we have... It is accessible for all category of users. Anyone can use it. The business class, the general purpose people, everyone can use it. It does not limit you at all. Effective organization and planning. Imagine you having a presentation. Then you start from A, B, C, Q, R, Y, S, M, N. It doesn't make sense. You mix the whole information, which becomes very difficult for people to even follow. So when using a presentation software, you have time to sit down and systematically write or prepare your slides. In that, the first slide, the second slide will connect to the first. In that way, the fourth connect to the third, the third to the second, the second to the first, so that they follow in that manner, a systemic manner where people will, ha will understand or to bring about what good understanding. So efficient organization and planning. Presentations are easy to edit. Yes, as I said, text. When you finish with it, you can easily go up there, edit whatever you have done. Just click on the text and you clear or you enter. You enter text. It will be e it's easy to edit. Then we have excellent for summarize, summarizing facts. Yes, it is very good. I don't need to write a whole note. I just need points, like as I'm doing now. I am, I've just read a sentence and I'm giving explanation. I don't need to write a point and all the explanation under it before you get it. So in summarizing, I can just give you a point, which are the salient points, then I will want to speak to that point, which is what beneficial to all. Okay, save file in different formats. You can save your document in PDF, even after you have done or you have prepared your presentation. You can still save your document in what a PDF format. Even you can save it, save it in a what, um, how do we call it? MP4 format, that's in the video format. So if you want your presentation to be in a video format so that you can share it for others, you can still save it in a video 
format. You can customize your presentation. That is create your own designs. You can create your own designs. You have nice backgrounds, create your own backgrounds, create your own animations. There are a whole lot of things you can do with um, this thing. PowerPoint, or sorry, presentation software. And if you practice always, you realize that presentation softwares are easy to use. They are quite easy to use. Now, let's look at the PowerPoint present uh, the interface. This is our PowerPoint interface. We will have another interface, so don't worry. So this is how it looks like, where it says double tap to add title. That's where we input our text. Double tap to add subtitle. We also input our text over there. So this is the first interface. Now let's look at this one. I have labeled it A, B, C, D, E, F, G to I. And what we are going to do, I'm going to talk about only A, B, C, D. I think E and F. I'm going to talk about this six groups. Then, when you are at, in your homes at your spare time, you can also try your house or look for the functions of G H F A G H I for me. Okay. So A. Now, if you look at the interface very carefully, you realize that the orange bar on top, which has the control box, is always what we know as what our title bar it has never changed and it will never change so always put in mind that every open window has what we call a title bar now underneath or beneath the title bar is what we call the menu bar and this menu bar has what we call the file home insert design transition animation slideshow review view add-ins help, premium, we have so many of them. Sometimes you um, download or install add-ins, which are also added to your menu bar. Now, after that one, it's what we call the ribbons. For every, for every, um, how do we call it, menu you click on, will open a particular ribbon for you. So normally, some people call it the menu tab instead of the menu bar, because it's in the form of tabs. When you click on the first one, it opens that particular ribbon for you. So let's go to the first one and let's see. So when you click on A, which is A, you have the result of what? This is the result you have. You have a drop-down menu which gives you home, new, open, home, new, open, info, save, save as. So we have commands under what our file where we can easily make changes or we, to our files that we have, the file that we are working on. Then the next one is what we call the quick access toolbar. The quick access toolbar also has the save button and what we call the slideshow. The slideshow button. So we have the what? The save button and the slideshow what button. Okay. Now we also have what? Undo. A redo now some some office or PowerPoint windows do not have them on the title bar some of them appear underneath the ribbons they appear underneath the ribbons so always put it in mind that they are not always on top let's see I think there's an example here yes in this picture that we have here, you realize that B, which is 
over here is our quick access toolbar. The first one we said is what our file B is what quick access toolbar. So we have it underneath the ribbons. Okay, then we have the ribbons, which is C. C is for what? Ribbons. So we have new slide under what? Insect. We have table that you can insert a table. You can insert a picture. You can even insert online pictures. Then we have screenshot. You can screenshot on PowerPoint. You can add photo albums. Then you can add shapes. Smart ads, charts, you can even download add ins over there. Okay, then we have the D, D, which stands for side pan, slide pan. It is located at the left side of the word interface. The slide pan shows the thumbnails of all the slides you have opened or you have created. So in our picture here, you realize that we have the first one, which is samples, uh, sample presentation. These are all what we call slides. So the slides are found in the what the slide pad. Then we have the slide area where we input our text and images. So wh where we have the red where it's covered in red, we have it to be what our slide area where we enter our slides and make all those beautiful presentations. Then we have F, which is for the tax pan. The tax pan. This contains more options and appears when you choose an option in the ribbon of the ribbon. In one of the ribbon, sorry, in one of the ribbon. So when you choose one of the ribbons, any of the ribbons that you choose, um, you click maybe the thesaurus, the thesaurus, where you go under the review pad, you click on it, you go to maybe translation, it gives you um, another pad, which is called a tax pad, where you can easily make changes or easily input words to find similar meanings or even change the language into a different language for you. So that is for the tax pad. Before we go to assignment, I'm going back to, uh, how do we call it? Our history again. I said the first presentation that came up was what we call the VCN what? VCN what? Very good. VCN Escovision, which was uh, produced or manufactured in the year or created in the year 1982. That was the first presentation software. Then the popular one that we used, that's PowerPoint, was in the year what, 1987. But remember, the VCN was published in 1984, even though it was created in 1982. So let's go to our assignments. Now, remember I said I'll be dealing with what the point is, the A, B, C, D, E, and F, so that you look forward, G, H, and I for me. So this is the image again. I want you to study it carefully. You can go online, check, and send me the answers or the solution to this question. I'll be expecting you, your answers to our social media platforms. So I'll be keenly looking at, looking for you. Because I know that we are, you know, we find it easy to get answers. Geeks, we find it easy. We, are not, we, we, we don't have any issue with finding solutions to problems. We are geeks and we are nets. So that's who we are. So, the question says, identify the path labeled A to I. Then, <clears throat> give the functions of G, H, and I. So, let me go back so that you look at the image again. You look at the interface. It says, identify the path. So, you are going to identify from A to I. 
we've already identified A, B, C, D, E, and F. So you just need to go back, look at the video, put down your answers. Then you look for what your G, H, and I. Then when you are done, you give us a function of what G, H, and I. So what have we learned so far? We said a presentation software A presentation software is a productivity software that helps in creating presentation slides or that helps in creating slides using text, audio, <clears throat> visual, and also sound. Sound is audio, right? So audio, visual, and also graphics or graphs or pictures to create presentation slides, which in turn helps to make a presentation run smoothly. So we said the first presentation was created, the first presentation software was created in 82, 1982. It was called VCN Excovision. PowerPoint was the first created, was first created in 1987 by Robert Gaskin and Dennis Austin for the American computer software company, Fortot, and sold to Microsoft in 1987. How much was it sold for? A whole lot of money, $40 million, even for today. If, they, if you come across $40 million, uh, it's a lot of money. It was called presentation and then changed to what power Point. That is in the same year as what, 1987. So this is where we bring the curtains down. Now till we meet again, I'll be waiting for my answers to the questions that Summit have given. Till we meet again next week, it's bye-bye for now. Don't stop learning because joy learning, we say what? Keep learning. You are a geek, you are a nerd. Geeks and nerds don't stop learning. We keep learning. Bye-bye. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Joy Learning TV.